Well, what's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out another of my videos. So we just left the boat launch, as you can see there. Got Chris with me today. We're getting the Chris and Chris tandem. We're going for some king salmon and some Dungeness crab. That's the plan. So we brought the crab pots today, four of them. We're gonna drop those on our way out to the salmon grounds. And from what I've heard, the report, you know, 15, 20 miles out. You gotta go a little farther this time of year. Hopefully the weather cooperates. We've got a little window today. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll drop some crab pots on the way and we'll see you guys out there. So we just got the first pot ready. If you guys watched my last crabbing video, I had the, I attached the uh, bait bags to the top of the pot and I had crabs on top eating the bait not going inside so with the underwater cam I learned and I have them now attached to the bottom of the pot hopefully that makes it so they gotta go in the pot to eat the food so we can go ahead and throw it down we're 130 feet of water right here All right, well, we got salmon head and anchovies in there. What do you think, Chris? We can catch the salmon that big today? Ooh, I hope so. I think that was one of those, for sure, 20 plus pounders. All right, throwing that one in now. All right, dropping this last pot in now. We're 160 feet of water. The first ones were like 130. We got my salmon carcass from the uh, first salmon of the year I caught. So hopefully that gets us some crab now. fishing grounds, found all the boats, I uh, just starting with the first ones here, with New Easy Rider, I uh, heard of some fish getting caught, uh, not, not amazing but definitely fish being caught, that's a good sign, so we're going to try and uh, get on them here now, figure out what depth they're at, I got the baits ready, but then I stepped on that one. So I'll have to rebait that one up. All right, let's get dropping down. Well, there's nets dropping around us. We haven't got our lines in. Oh boy, we're excited. So if you watched my first salmon video, you saw that the red flasher was the one producing. So we're starting with that one this morning. We got underwater camera on both the lines to start. I have four of these now. I'm gonna try and capture these bites all with the underwater cam. So I wanna show you guys my new downrigger balls. So that one right there is from a company called Four Fins, and that design makes it glide through the water a lot better. Um, it's gonna turn with the boat and it's not gonna kick back as much. I used these on my first trip on Kevin's boat and they were amazing. The downrigger line was always basically vertical with the boat. This is why having the underwater camera on your line is so much fun, because you can see what's actually happening. So we're in 400 feet of water. I haven't dropped the downrigger ball yet. We're like one or two feet down from the surface. And look at what's about to happen. Fussing with the downrigger here, getting it plugged in and set to zero. So I was holding the rod and felt doot, 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 doot. And bait's gone. Underwater camera's there, I don't know. The bait's all the way gone, makes me think it's a salmon. So Chris has old trusty on his, the chartreuse flasher, and the green glow crippled head. 
I'm at 33 feet because I think I just got bit on the surface. You guys can laugh at me at home if it's a uh, jack smelt or something, but I took it off the downrigger clip, so that makes me think it was actually a salmon. Um, and so we'll put Chris's at, we're thinking 55 feet. So this is Chris's uh, rod and reel. I'm really liking his rod, the Akuma Monterey. <clears throat> this is the uh, MON-HS801M plus, eight footer. Uh, definitely a nice trolling rod. Fish number one. So all the fish on the opener had empty bellies. People out here are commenting how the salmon have empty bellies. I'm guessing this one's empty. What the heck are they eating out here? Oh, this one has something on it. Look at that. Is that herring? I think that is a mackerel. So this one's not empty. Interesting. Is that a mackerel? I don't feel like it's a herring because it's so skinny and thin, yeah. It has a mouth like a herring. But cool, that's what they're eating and we've seen some schools down there. I think that's actually a sardine, not a mackerel. Sardine, that's what I'm going with. But I'll look on the internet and we'll, we'll post it there what I really think it is. So the leader line got a little chewed up on from that fish, so I'm changing it out. Um, you know, if you're using the crippled anchovies, when you buy the single one, it comes with the pre-made setup. Um, you know, when that breaks or whatever happens, you still have the head, you can tie yourself a new one. Or Pipple Tackle, they make one, the two hook fixed tie trolling rig. So if you have these heads and, and you don't know how to tie up the leader lines, Go ahead and you can buy these and just put these through on your crippled anchovy. Well, lucky for that fish, he didn't get hooked long and he took my bait. So now let's fast forward 19 minutes from now. You would think I wouldn't be able to catch a fish because my bait is gone. I need to check my line. But look, here's a fish interested in my bait. It's just the crippled anchovy head. Sure that the head of the anchovy is still in there, but there's no bait and we're not really getting the action we're desiring. And he still bites it, but he doesn't get hooked. All right, let's get rebaited. There we go. Sure been a slower bite for us. And that just happened. No, we missed one. The underwater cam's still on. Well, we've seen a few fish caught in the area in the last 10, 15 minutes, and there was a dry spell of 
over an hour. We didn't see any fish caught. So I think the things are picking back up now. Let's go ahead and get this one back down, fresh underwater cam and ready to get a hookup. So look who made an appearance on camera, a mackerel. I really want to try one of these on the line later this summer or fall for a bluefin tuna. Well, it's going slow for us. Scratch baits, missed bites. It's kind of what's just happening. Um, we're going to move in closer to shore. We're hearing on the radio of maybe a new bite picking up. It's hard to know exactly where it is. You kind of have to uh, decipher their code language, but we think we know what they're talking about. Um, so we're gonna probably head in a little bit closer. It's you know on the way home anyway, so We're gonna you know, we'll be fishing there for for a good amount of time. We need to get another salmon here So we'll see you at the new spot All right, we're in the new spot now got my last underwater camera but I'm gonna be dropping down. Hopefully we can get one on that and have them stick. So we're probably about two miles closer to land, shore, than previous. And yeah, we're feeling a little deflated. One fish and uh, I guess probably five hours of trolling now. Um, so yeah, new spot. New spot mojo, here we go. Let's get one. Get this fish in. Gut number two and see if what's in his belly. We're seeing bait on the fish finder. I'm guessing as we saw earlier, the mackerel or sardine. That's all it has in it. So it's definitely eating something. It's good. No, it's, it's fish. Oh, it's okay. It looks like anchovy kind of. Who knows? Look how small the row sacks are to start off the season here in April. And then you've seen them when they go to spawn, they're huge. Good meal there for someone. So you can see I'm giving a thumbs up here. There's a boat that we're gonna pass on the side and he saw we hooked up and he quickly got out of the way and I wanted to acknowledge him for that. All right, let's get this third one in. Uh, 
I got it. 33 feet. Same, that's the exact same spot. Is it? Same rod too. Right over the mark. I hope this camera's still on. It's probably not, but let's see. Let's get it. Limit. It's on. Is it? Yeah. Nice. We got both those last fish. Both those last fish on the underwater cam. Nice. All right, we're, it's not gonna last much longer. We'll take it off now. Double fish. So what color you call that crippled anchovy? That's the one I caught the last two on. Unicorn, cotton candy. I don't know. The it's name was like just an abbreviation of something. I didn't know what it meant. Well, we feel lucky to get that flurry of two fish there. We've been trolling for another 45 minutes, hour, trying to get that last fish. Not happening. A lot of boats have left. And when we got those two fish, we were on a bunch of bait and we cannot find that bait anymore. And I, yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check those crab pots now. Got a good soak on them. God, they've been soaking for seven hours or something we've been out here for. So good day at the salmon grounds. Let's take a look at those fish again. There they are. Should we get a measure on that big one? Looks like a 29. Don't say I'm not a good guesser. 29, maybe a little over. Those other ones, those are probably 26, 27, maybe 28 inches, but decent fish, good quality. A lot of these early season ones, that meat is bright red. All right, well, we can go ahead and reel those up and we'll see you guys when we're pulling the crab pots. Hopefully we can get some dungies. All right, what do you guys think? How many crab are we gonna get today? I'm hoping we each get a couple, you know, three or four each, that's ideal. I'm thinking there'll be a pot that gets nothing and a few other pots that get some, but who knows? Oh, caught some load in it. That's a keeper. one though. Bunch of smalls. What are you thinking, six inches? Yep, in between six and six and a quarter. Good crab. Number two. Hopefully that we can get a few more crab in this one. One keeper, but we need some friends. Not struggling. No. Oh yes. I'm gonna say three. Throw the female back, right? We got three keepers in pot two, so that's awesome. We got four total now. All right, well, I'm happy the third pot was really close to the second one. This is 145 feet of water. Well, three more in that one. We got seven nice male keeper crab. So that beat expectations. Now can we find one in this last one? Eight, four each. Let's hope so. So pot four here. We got seven keepers. We can split them up evenly. Let's get one or three. Hopefully there's no rock crab. This one's a little bit closer to the rocks than the others. Well, I don't think we got any keepers in the last no, one here. No keepers. Keeper female, but we'll let her go back.
Always oh, just pulled back into the marina here. What a productive day out there. It did take longer than we wanted to, but we got the results. Three nice salmon. And then seven Dungeness crab. So it doesn't get much better in the combo than that, right? King salmon, Dungeness crab. You ready to eat good tonight, Chris? Yeah. And probably tomorrow as well. Yeah. <laughs> So after watching Outdoor Chef Life for all these years, I finally got the courage to try making some sushi rolls myself. And I didn't film it because I didn't think it would turn out very well. And I wish I did because I'm pretty impressed with myself. We got crab, salmon, the rice, avocado, cream cheese, and cucumber. And they tasted as good as they looked. So I hope you guys liked the video today. Was there some good underwater footage? I hope so. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right, later guys.